brief video, we're going to provide some hints on the scrambled equations problem. Uh, we're going to make use of several of the features in Java libraries that we learned earlier. Specifically, we're going to make use of the JavaScript engine to evaluate strings and treat them as mathematical expressions. We're going to reuse code that we uh, previously saw to permute an array. And we're also going to make extensive use of the string split function to parse the input. Let's start with that. If I have an input string like this, where I have a target number defined, then a colon, and then a bunch of numbers and operators separated by a space, I can strip out the target uh, with this split uh, call with the colon as the delimiter. And when I do that, it's going to create a two-part array the first a string part will contain the target and then the second part will contain the rest of the line and then we can take the first part and parse it as an integer and store that target as an integer variable in our program once we have the second part split out here as parts sub 1 we can call a second split method using the space as a delimiter to take each of these numbers and mathematical operators and put them each into an array and uh, then we can call the permuting array method down here uh, with that line. Now we're not showing you the permuting array here because that's the part you have to write. We do want to make some comments though on the string evaluator that we've seen before. One thing that we've added here that you did not see in the previous version is this try catch block. And the reason for this is that we, we want to send the uh, evaluator uh, different expressions, some of which are going to be valid and some of which are going to be invalid. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Let's take, a, let's take a look at this input string right here. Now, if I was to send this to the, uh, to the function evaluator, something like this, for divided by 3 times 9. That's a perfectly valid mathematical expression. Uh, and the even though it will not match our target of 12, the evaluator will simply return false in this case right here. However, if I was to create a permutation of this string to be something like this, you can see that this is not a valid mathematical expression. And if we were to send that to the evaluator, it would generate a runtime error. Now, we don't want to write a lot of code to figure out which permutations of this string array here are valid and which ones are invalid. We would prefer to take all the permutations, including these bad ones, and feed them to the evaluator also. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow the evaluator to tell us which ones are good and which ones are bad. But we don't want the program to crash when it, the evaluator gets a bad expression. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this try catch block. And if the catch block catches an exception, in particular a script exception, uh, we want it to return false. Okay, and then that will allow uh, this permuting array method simply to keep going and try the next permutation unimpeded by any real-time errors.